My name is Nicole. And Excuse me? Nicole. Nicole, okay. Yeah. I'm from, I'm actually was born here in Kensington and was raised in South Philly. Okay, and I'm sorry for asking your age. Um, how old are you? 39. Okay. I'll be 40 July 11th. Okay, so you're coming up on the big 4-0. Uh, yeah. Um, so born here in Kensington. And raised in South Philly, yeah. Okay, and uh, two-parent home? No. Okay. Um, actually, when I was born, my mom was already had, was pregnant with me when she met the man that I call my father. My real father didn't want me because I was a girl. So he, when he met my mother, he put his name on my birth certificate and he had raised me since, so. Okay, so you said, will you just look at this one? Oh, I'm gonna yeah. move around though, sorry. Okay. It's, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said your father, he didn't want you because you were a girl? I was a girl, yeah. So when my, the guy that my mom met when she was pregnant with me, he put his name on my um, birth certificate and he raised me, him and his family. Uh, your father didn't know what he messed out on. Right. Having a girl? Yeah. It's one of the awesome, you know, it's shit. <laughs> yeah. He fucked up. He messed out. Yeah. Um, do you know who he is? Or I know sp- his name, but I've never seen him, never known of him, and I didn't care. So. Okay. I have my dad. That He's my dad, and I would... I don't even want to meet him. I can care less who he is. Awesome. And um, would you say you had what type of what type of childhood would you say you had? I actually had both because my mom was in addiction herself. So, and then my dad was incarcerated. So his family, I would go with his family on the weekends, and I would be here during the week with my mother. So I got the she like struggled, you know, the whole addiction part. Waking up, not having food, not being able to pay the bills, and random people coming in and out the household. So, and then when I went with my grandmother, it was you ate dinner at the table, you had to be in, you had to go to school, you had to get good grades. You know, you were taught how to be in the kitchen, how to cook, and no, they didn't tolerate disrespect or yeah. so. Which one did you like better? It's crazy. I actually craved to come down here more with my mom. Yeah. And I was just telling him, because he's he's my boyfriend of 12 years, I was actually telling Uh him today that as much as my grandmother did and gave me, I wanted to come here and be with my mom, who had no food, no hot water. Just to be with my mother and my brother, I craved for that, the family attention, my mother's attention. Yeah. So So do you think it was because it was your mother and your brother? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so got you. Yeah. And um, did you finish school? I did not. Okay. What? At what? It, what? You know what? Uh, what happened that you didn't finish school? What age were you? What I grade? was fifteen. I was in tenth grade. Um, I ended up on Memorial Day week, and I came down here to visit my mom for the weekend. Didn't go back with my grandmother. And stayed here, and she was clean at the time, ended up relapsing, so I had no rules. I didn't have a curfew, and coming in late and getting up for school, traveling to South Philly, it was very hard. So I ended up just not, one day I was like, I'm not going back, it's too much. And um, didn't finish school, ended up getting pregnant at the age of 17, and I knew that I didn't want to raise my child down here, so I ended up going back to my grandmother, pregnant and no diploma. So, what was her reaction when you came back? She was very upset that I, did, especially that I didn't have the diploma. But she also, it was like bittersweet for upset that I was pregnant and wasn't with the father and was, you know, all that, mm-hmm. not married and matter of fact, she didn't even meet him or. All that just coming to her door, pregnant, and it, it was a lot for her. And sure. then not going back to her after I came for a weekend and not calling her and even letting her know that I was okay. Mm. So all that, it was a lot for her. But she also wanted me there in that time because she would have rather me with a baby being there than yep. versus living the other way. So. And um, did you end up, 
You end up having the baby? Yeah. Okay. What'd you have? I had a son. He's named Jaden. He's actually 22 okay. in college. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, awesome. For entertainment lawyer. Yeah. Nice. What type of relationship do you guys have? Very, it's a good relationship, but I'm also standoffish, like not calling and in my head, my pride, knowing that like, I feel like I failed as a mom. So it's like, I stand back. Yeah. But, um, when we are together, it's like no time was ever lost or gotcha. it's just, we pick up where we left off. Is it because of your addiction that you're standoffish? Yes. Okay. How does he feel about that? To me, he, like, he'll tell me, like, he's very understanding of it, and, he, you know, he, he just wants the best for me, but then I'm, I feel like he's lying to me because he don't want to hurt my feelings and because he's my son. Um, so I, I don't know how he really feels. Like, gotcha. when he tells me, it's just he's on, he just wants me to get it together and just be the best person I can be for me. Mm -hmm. He don't judge. What would you say to him if he was watching this video? I I would tell him that I love him and he was the best thing that ever happened to me. He told me how to love and how to be a woman. How to be a mom. It's not easy to be a parent at all, right? And then we throw in something like addiction. Um you know, and unfortunately 99.99% of the time, addiction prevails. Addiction wins, right? Right. Yeah, it's it's very, um, it's unfortunate. Is that the only child that you have? No, I have five others. Okay. And um, how's your relationship with them? The same. Well, not like the same, it's, you know, the first two or like the same father sink. So I was more in their lives. Then my third, I, I had gave him to his dad when I went into addiction. Okay. Um, so my, my relationship, when I talk, like, like I said, when I, the first three, it's like when I'm with them, it's like we pick right up yeah. the first three because we were close. One second. Excuse me. Hello. He said he's there near the porta potty. Yeah. He's in a... That's... No, that's normal for... That's, that's just normal for... That. He said he's in a brown CRV. A Honda CRV. If you don't want to, you don't, you know what I mean? You don't, uh, you don't have to. It's no big deal. I don't. All right. I'll just tell him. All right. All right. I'm going to just message him, tell him, forget it. Um, just message me when you're on your way. All right. All right. All right. Hold on. Um, sorry. No, you're fine. So, will yeah. you just touch on? Yeah. Sorry. So the the first three we were we were close. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, when I was in addiction, my well, my grandmom kept the two the two oldest, and my third son I had given gave him to his father, um, because I wanted the best for him. I didn't want him to tag along with me and struggle through what I was going through. Mm -hmm. But I always said when they were younger that I would never. How can a parent not have their child? And I would be homeless with my child, eating out of a trash can, much. But when you're in that predicament. You're, I would never want my child to drag along with me on the streets eating out of a trash. I would, I didn't yeah. want it. Um, I just feel more bad for him because I feel like because of the separation, because I know how I felt being separated from my brother. 
you just get a lot of questions in your head and you crave for the attention more. So I just feel more bad that he's not, he wasn't with his brother and sister, but he's also safe and, and had a good life, though. I could say that. Okay. So. How long have you been down here in Kensington now? Um, I would like we come and get our stuff, leave, but it's actually been about six one second for the train. Sorry. It's been about four years now, on and off. Mm-hmm. So So you guys live together, you and your boyfriend? Yeah. Okay. What would you like to say to somebody who, you know, sees you and thinks there's just a junkie, there's, there's just a dope fiend. You know, what would you like to say to them, if anything? Um, I would just like to say, just try not to judge. I mm-hmm. feel like I did that my whole life, judged everybody, judged everything, and I always find myself in a situation that I judged, and then you get your answer on what, whatever the question was in your head, or how could they have did this, how could they have did that. You get your answer quicker than you think. And... Mm-hmm. Just to take the time out to just, you know, maybe ask the question or be nice to someone and just to say hi and not. So like I say, it's just try not to judge because I'm not just because I put a drug in my body and make bad decisions doesn't make me a bad person yeah. at all. I'm still Nicole. I may not be the person how I once dressed or how I once lived and, and like material wise, but heart wise and stuff. I'm still saying Nicole, I just have an addiction. Yeah. I agree. Um, Do you have any questions for me? Anything you'd like to ask me? Um, What do you think is, like, more important when you're first getting clean, like, to... Uh, Meetings, people, places, and things. It's, It's, like, so cliche and so obvious, but that's what it is. That's why it's cliche, and that's why it's obvious. Um, For me, I stood in meetings, you know at least, at very least, once a day. Most like, you know, most of the time, twice a day for the first year. Um, Just for accountability, so I can have something to do, you know, and then I met people there. Um, I had to move out of Philly. I couldn't stay here and get clean. There was no way I had to go. Um, You know, and then learning how to deal with, you know, we all have baggage and trauma and, you know, bullshit that, yeah. Unresolved. Learning how to deal with that stuff. Healthy. Um, that was some of the biggest things for me. And then, like you said, is is judging. You know, I started off, before ever took a drug, I started off, you know, uh, having a block here, <laughs> you know. Right. And then I ended up slowly using it, you know, so... Right. I've seen it from all different sides. My parents were addicts growing up. You know, I thought it was a choice when I was younger. Um, and then I realized, you know, no, nah, it's not so much of a choice. You know, right. our choice is taken away very soon. Right. You know, so. That's um, true. Yeah, I would encourage you to, to, to get out of here. You know, it's it's not easy anywhere, but it's a lot easier elsewhere. Right. You know what I mean? you can't find your people places and things. Because yep. I'll find, I'm the type of person that'll tell myself, they can't tell me i got to cut this family member off. It's just me. If I get me clean, I can still go around that. That's my family member. And then that's what I, I always go around either a friend or a family member. Yep. And I'll do good. And then slowly but surely I fall into whatever it is that I was doing. It's all the time. All the time. Yeah. Um... I agree. Sometimes we got to cut people off. You know, sometimes we have to. And it's uh, it's nothing wrong with it, I don't believe. I thank you very much for your time. I thank you. And I, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Mm-hmm.